Yes, I agree with you, Rose. Let's start from the beginning. Welcome, everyone, to my first video on the basics of molecular biology. Let's get started. We'll leave those two alone while we jump into our own lesson for today. So, what is the beginning? Well, I thought about this for a while, and uh, actually, Shelly already gave you the answer, and that is DNA. So, what is DNA? That really is kind of the million dollar question right now. And you can easily write an, an entire textbook on DNA alone. And we are definitely not doing that. I'm sure most of you have heard of DNA before. Mm, even if you have never taken a single biology class. In short, it is the code or I like to say blueprint um, of life. Blueprint of life. Yeah, seriously, it really is that important. And uh, FYI, DNA, let me get my pin up here. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. All right, so that is a pretty long word. And, um, but it actually will make a lot of sense and I'm going to go, I'm going to go over why later on. If we take a look at the kingdoms of life, right? Here we go. We have plants, we have animals, uh, fungi or fungi, got protists down here and also of course, uh, bacteria. So if we take a look at this, all of these organisms have DNA encoding instructions and what do these instructions say they determine what the organism looks like its biological functions and processes behavior essentially everything okay so some viruses do not have dna okay um, but then again viruses aren't really alive and they don't belong to any of these groups shown here um, so yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about them some other time, but for the most part, yes, everything has DNA and is extremely important. Here we have a very striking microscopy image of MRC5 cells, which are human cells, okay? And what's, what you notice is that you see these blue um, circular structures in these cells, okay? So these are the nuclei, or singular will be nucleus. And um, you see that they're blue, okay? So why are they blue? Well, they're blue is because they've been stained with a chemical called DAPI, okay? So DAPI binds to uh, certain regions of, uh, of, of DNA. And if you, look at, if you look at these cells under fluorescent microscopy, they'll show up blue. And so what does this mean? This means that it looks like, indeed, the vast majority of DNA in eukaryotic cells is found in the nucleus. Now, we've talked about the importance of DNA and where it's found, but what is it made out of? What are its components? All right, so here we have a subunit of DNA, a nucleotide, and let me write that one out. Nucle... I uh, can't spell nucleotide, okay? nucleotide. Now, it is made out of three main components. A ribose, which is right here, which I will circle, um, which is this five carbon ring structure. And if you're just curious, um, it's numbered like this. So this is the first carbon here, second one, third one, fourth one, and then lastly, this is the fifth carbon. Um, it is also made out of a phosphate group, which is attached here. And then lastly, the third component is a nitrogenous base, which is over here. Now, why is this called a nitrogenous base? Um, gee, I don't know. Maybe it's because they're full of, uh, full of nitrogens? Okay, yeah, potentially, yes. That makes sense, right? Um, so this subunit as a whole is called a nucleotide. 
and uh, um, these are the subunits of DNA. And there's actually four types of nucleotides that make up DNA. And the only difference, right, the only difference is that they have, each of them have a different nitrogenous base, okay? I will show you guys uh, later ab ab about that. And basically the other bases are called, um, well, this base here is called adenine, which I'll just write out. Adenine, I believe that's how you spell it. Yes, adenine. And there's also three other bases, which is called uh, cytosine, thymine, and guanine. Um, okay, yes, this is how you spell it. Guanine. Okay. But let's go back to the full name of DNA first. Uh, let's look at this once again. Let's look at uh, deoxyribonucleic acid. All right. So now that we've gone through what a nucle what a nucleotide looks like, can we start making some sense of this name? Why is it called DNA? Well, we can. So. Um, here again, this is the nucleotide, and uh, sure, this is the building block of DNA. But we can actually, uh, based on what this looks like, we can actually we can actually figure out why DNA is called deoxyribonucleic acid. All right, first of all, we have. Um, sorry, my pen is sometimes not work. Sometimes doesn't work very well. Okay, so deoxy here. So what does deoxy mean? What does it sound like? Well. Deoxy means no oxygen. Well, what is that referring to? Well, if you look at this position here on this uh, ribose here, um, it's missing something, right? It's missing the OH group, and thus um, DNA is uh, has the term deoxy deoxy in it, no oxygen. Next, we have ribo. Well, I already went over this already, and you probably already know that ribo is just referring to this uh, ribose right here. Okay, and uh, nucleic. Well, nucleic. Um, well, what is this thing called? It's called a nucle nucleotide. That kind of gives it away. Also, though, where is DNA found? In the nucleus. Makes sense, no? Okay, and then lastly, we have something called uh, acid. Now, what is an acid? Well, in the most simplest and uh, biological term, it means a compound that tends to be a proton donator or basically it has a negative charge under normal conditions and if you can imagine if dna is made out of these nucleotides you know hundreds thousands millions billions of these um, then dna itself must be negatively charged and why is that is because it has this phosphate group remember this phosphate group has a negative charge okay so hopefully now that uh, we've gone over this that now you can see why DNA is called deoxyribonucleic acid. Okay, here I'm just showing you guys the rest of the nitrogenous bases. We already went over um, adenine down here. So we have also cytosine, thymine, and guanine, right? So these are the four um, uh, nucleotides or nitrogenous bases. Uh, that make up uh, DNA. Now, technically, the structures here shown are not nucleotides. Okay, can you figure out why? Well, the main reason is because that they do not have that phosphate group. Okay, so in, instead, these are actually called uh, nucleosides. Uh, this is really not important right now, uh, but it's just kind of a techni technicality I want to point out. Also, though, take note that uh, the cytosine and thymine has this single uh, ring structure, right? Single ring structure. While guanine and uh, adenine has this double ring structure. Now, what does this mean? Well, this means more terms, right? Just like everything else in science. So, uh pyridamines as a, as a whole these guys can be referred to as uh sorry what did i just say pyridamines py, py, okay i really have trouble pronouncing this word for some reason it's pi pyrimidines okay 
So they can be referred as such. And uh, these guys down here, because of this double ring structure that we see, can be called purines. Okay? So, lastly, I just want to say one more thing, and that is that when people talk about nucleotides or nucleosides or whatever, they're just going to refer to them using their nitro nitrogenous bases, like cytosine, thymine, thymine, guanine, Adenine, okay, and uh, more than that, there's just most likely just going to say use their uh, single capital letter abbreviations. So, cytosine is abbreviated as a capital C, guanine is abbreviated as a capital G, and you can probably guess the rest. So, thymine is a T, and uh, adenine is an A. Okay, so this is the conventional method, and this is what I'm going to be using as well from now on. Okay, time to wrap it up for today. What have we learned? Well, hopefully not nothing, okay? Um, so we learned that DNA is really, really important, right? Because it is the code of life. It is the blueprint of life. It is what, you know, what makes you you or makes me me and what makes, you know, a insect different from an alligator or an alligator different from a bird or a blue whale, okay? Um, and DNA is mainly found in the nucleus, in eukaryotic cells, of course. Well, what about prokaryotes, you might ask, uh, like bacteria? Well, they do have DNA as well. You can trust me on this. But they do not have a nucleus. I will talk about this later on. And hopefully you have a better understanding on why DNA is called deoxyribonucleic acid. Hopefully that makes sense. And then lastly, I showed you guys that um, the components of DNA, which is uh, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine, otherwise known as ATGC, the nucleotides. And you have, a, you have a general understanding of what they look like. So in our next lesson, now that we know that the components of DNA you know, and what they look like, We'll be discussing how all these nucleotides, um, how, how do they come together, okay? How do they come together to form the very unique structure of a DNA? And we'll be going over that next time. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Feel free to ask me anything. And please like and subscribe. I will see you guys next time. Take care, everyone.